Hey everyone, Kevin Sexton here with another episode of Art with Fire. We're down to the last couple of stages uh, on this Swamp Demon and the uh, Frank Frazetta study. And I went ahead and took the liberty of putting in some darks and on the Swamp Demon and went ahead and done these trees. This step, this 10 minute video, I'm going to show you how to do this tree in the similar fashion that I've done these others right now. So let's get to it and see what we can get done today. And once again, we're still using uh, some sap greens, uh, burnt sienna, uh, a touch of red, any color red, just depending on what color you want. But on this tree here, there's a little bit more green than there is anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch into the sap green, kind of get a touch of it going here. I already had a touch of yellow, and I think I got some orange. Yeah, here's some orange somewhere. Kind of, I don't want pure green. Just to, like I said, all we want to do right here is just block in some of this color. Kind of give it some color. This tree really pops on this painting. And where we got this purple here, I'm just going to lay it in. There we go. And see, by pre-painting it, all I had to do, I got a little bit on the swamp beating. Touch it with your finger, poof, it comes right off. So, that's, like I said, that's the joys of the oil painting that I love the most. It's versus acrylics. It's a lot quicker changes. If you make a mistake, uh, usually you can just get your palette knife and just scrape something right off. And, uh, and you don't want, uh, like I said, uh, acrylics, when they, when they get on there and they dry, they're, they're on there. There's no... No getting it off, but at least with oil paints, I love how you can work in layers. You want the under color to transform your uh, above color. So and that, that's how you get a lot of these cool illusions. They're looking really good, and I love this green right here. And it's got a little. I'm gonna carry some of this green while I got it on the brush. Let's overlay a couple little things here. On a little bit more green while I have it on the snake. Just get some, a little bit more potency on it here. Kind of get some more green on it. And, and see, I'm not even really trying to worry about staying in the, some of the pattern on this thing. I'm just getting it on it. Let it do its thing. There we go. And the reason I'm telling you these techniques are not being so uptight and oh my gosh, keep everything, you know, let the paint do its job, you know. When you try to get in there to be too perfect, what you end up doing is you're just, there's no illusion to it. And you, in, in this kind of painting, you want that illusion, you want that air of mystery working in with it and stuff dribble there, no big deal, he just want me and he can have a little green on him. There we go. Yeah, the, the paint's been a little funky. Like I said, I'm out here in the, in the studio, it's like 50 some degrees. So it's been a just a real hoot working in cold weather, but yeah, you know, once you get it on there and start playing with the paint, see what it's, what it's doing, what's not doing, then you can usually get in there and kind of figure it out. And like I said, it's not, don't let anything keep you from painting. You want to uh, find excuses to paint, not excuses not to paint. Now we're already getting this uh, rather thick burnt sienna here. And we're just going over, there's different little highlights and uh, different grooves in the tree. And pretty, all we're doing here really, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is add some character to this tree. You know, give it some depth, give it some thickness. You know, get, getting the bland out of it. And you just want to highlight some colors in here. Popping them in. Yeah, it's looking good. And the same bird sienna is what I've done with the uh, Swamp Witch here. And all I did is went right over the, the pencil and just right where I wanted the strongest darks is where I put it in. And then I clean my brush, wipe it off. It's still slightly wet and ever so gently buffed it. And what that does is uh, kind of, it left the darkness, but at, at the same time, by buffing it in there, it kind of darkened up my medium tone, just a snap. So I can come in here later 
and really pop it out with the highlights, with the white. And that's what I gotta do with the Swamp Demon here, is really pop in the light so he can even more than what he is now pop on through. And like I said, we got some, take some more of that green here. I'm gonna add a little green. And like I said, all this right here, you're putting some green on here, and this is this kind of makes it look like there's some you know moss growing on some of these trees. You know. Oh, give it character. I mean, you don't have to be all perfect. No, like I said, and this is, I, I don't want to do it if it was, if I was just going to do this and make it look exactly like his, I just go to the print shop and print one. You know, the study is the composition, how he uses his lights and his darks. And, uh, and co colors is one thing, but the and to me, what more here is how he creates a story. This right here is just so interesting to look at. You, you want to know more, you know, what happened before this? What led up to this moment? What, what happens next? And that's, if you can do a painting that makes people ask questions, what happens next? Boom. You, the artwork has done its job. And that's what you, you want to capture... Too many people want to do, and, I, and I, I'm guilty of this as well. We're in here, we're working on a picture, and we do a pose. And it, and it looks like a pose. It feels like a pose. This right here feels like we're watching a movie, and there's a photographer hitting the swamp, snap, right in the middle of the action. And that was something that Frazetta was this, uh, just, okay, he was the master of it. Bottom line, he was the master of it. The catcher... A painting in the height of the height of the moment. So, and that was, and that's what I'm studying here. Trying to, the more and more good art you look at, the better you're gonna get. You concentrate on this new Photoshop crap that's out there, stuff that looks like, gosh, Powerpuff Girls kind of art, SpongeBob crap. You, the more you keep looking at that stuff is the reason why these kids nowadays like this, these crappy cartoons. That Well, they've been Spongebob to death, Powerpuff Girls to death, and their, eye, their artistic eye sucks. They, actually, they, they got it run before they even had time to develop it. So, thank God I grew up in the age of uh, He-Man, which was awesome artwork on that cartoon, G.I. Joe... You know, cartoons like that, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, Fire and Ice, which Frank Rosetta uh, done was the art director of, over that. Good art as a kid, constantly good art as an adult. And these new kids, crappy art, crappy art today. And it's just, it's a crying shame. So, anyway, now we're going to move in here. We'll see if we can't get some of the... I'm going to let this dry up here a little bit before I come in and do some of this darker shading. I'm going to lay in some of this mist. And I just got straight white here. And we're just going to really load it up thick and just see what we're going to do here. And just kind of start in the middle of this. I'm out here alone. Wife's not feeling good today. She's been sick all weekend. So, yes, I'm out here <coughs> manning my own camera. So, no big deal. I'm just going to get in here. We're just going to pop in this white. Just keep it soft. Circular motions. And now, and you can, and overlapping is perfectly fine. All this is settled in a little bit. And that's what we want to do is kind of, we want this to go behind things, in front of things, to create that illusion and to get it, keep it soft. We don't need much right now because now we're going to come here Take it on up. And we're just gonna start popping it in. Like I said, don't get all, or just get in there and make it work. It's really hard to screw this up. It really is. And uh, that's another thing, people. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Get in here, and we're all here to learn. I mean, I'm nowhere near, like I said, I don't claim to be a teacher or anything, but the most I've ever grown as an artist is get I seen my most growth when I started getting over the fear of wanting to try something like this. And uh, I'm gonna watch this one go right over this. Let some of that color 
bleed through, it's all right. Let it bleed through. Nothing's a perfect color.